All right, so let's pick up her studies here individually, topics, while my wife's in the hospital, and one day we'll get back her with, with the chapters in the Bible. But let's pick up on a study about husbands, the man of the family. And it's sorry that in 2019, I've got to say the man of the family because there is today where there are, I don't know what you say, two husbands. I don't know what they call it, but a man that's married to a man. In the Bible, it is a male-female relationship of the husband being the man and the female being the wife. That's the biblical sounds of marriage. And any other way is an abomination to the Lord, and it's not going to work. It's a sin. So let's turn our Bibles to Genesis 2-7 to begin this study about husbands. And it's going to be some things said with the Bible. We're going to look at the Bible, in the Bible, read the Bible, the King James Bible. And there are going to be things that are going to be said, and, and what is read, black and white, that they're the modern worldly in, saved or lost, is going to get offended, they're going to get angry, and to them I say tough. It's what saith the Lord, not what you say and how you feel. God never asked your opinion. God never asked how you felt. So Genesis 2, 7, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So you say, Stiley, what does that have to do with husband? Well, it's the creation of man. Husband is a man. And if you're going to get any soundings in a family, where the Bible's going to see that we'll read that the Bible says that the man is to be the head of the house. I know that's taboo today, but the man is the head of the house. So the man, let's start off with the very foundation of a marriage that's going to work in the appeal of God. Is that man the husband? Must believe that he was created and it didn't happen by evolution. That he was, he was made by God for the purpose of God. And that it's not the product of evolution. Now, keeping your place in Genesis 2, let's go to Revelation 4 real quick. Revelation chapter 4, when we look at the created man, marriages of evolution don't work. You say, well, you know, I know, you know, people believe in evolution and they went to death. Okay, that's fine. Where did they go after death? Have they believed on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved? In Revelation chapter 4, verse 11, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou, God, has created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. So there's a creation. We were made to give God Glory, honor, and power. Back to Genesis 2, 7. That's what man was made for. To praise God. And if a man is going to venture into a marriage as the husband, he doesn't praise God, he doesn't give God the glory, it's not going to be a successful marriage. And when we look at Genesis chapter 2, verse 16, and the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. God gave the first, that's the first commandment ever given to man. Long before Moses ever shows up, that's the first commandment. You can eat of any tree in the field, but the tree of, 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 of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat. Thou shalt surely die. In Genesis 2.21, 
And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, that's the first man, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs that and closed up the flesh thereof. I mean, excuse me. And he and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. That's the first man, that's the man that God created. He put him to sleep, and some say death, and we're going to look at that in a moment. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, made he a woman. That's the help me, in verse 18. Made he a woman, and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bone, the woman, and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother. Adam had no father and mother. Shall leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and we're not ashamed. The first marriage impact of the Bible is brought to us by God putting Adam to sleep, taking a rib, making a woman, and the first quote unquote ceremony is Adam mentioning where this woman came from and what the result of that marriage is, says a man shall leave his father and mother. A man, a man, a male. If you don't know male and female, we did a study on that the other day called male and female. Shall cleave unto his wife. So the man is the cleave to the wife, which is called woman. A marriage, the first marriage in the Bible is a male and a female. And the female is called woman. She's called wife. Now, as I said in verse 21, some believe, I got a hair that's in my way somewhere. <laughs> some believe that that sleep in verse 21 is death of Adam. So if we were to take that, that is death death of Adam. He died for his bride. We've got something that's quite interesting when we turn our Bibles to Ephesians 5.25. Ephesians 5.25. If Adam did die, for his bride. Ephesians 5.25. Husbands. That's what our subject is. Love your wives. Would you would ever have to think that that would have to been said? That's a commandment. By Paul. The Holy Spirit. To Christians. In Ephesus. Because sometimes the wife is unlovable. So are you, husband. I knew you were going to make that remark. Husbands, love your wives. All right, here we go. Even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, Christ died, Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures. Many, many husbands out there, the Christian persuader, will say, yeah, the suffering also died. And the scriptures proclaim that if Adam died, here we see Jesus Christ in verse 25, dying for his bride, the church. And if Christ so loved his bride that he gave his life, and if you're going to say that I love you to a woman, to your wife, 
Does that love go as far to say that you would give up your life for her? As Christ did. Now, I may do, I did kind of one Saturday at the farmer's market, but I may, one of the studies I might do on love. Do you love your wife as much as Christ has loved the church and gave himself for it? Now, I was told the other day that one of the reasons for divorce by somebody who works in a, in a, in a, a lawyer's office that does divorces is that when that spouse has heard that a diagnosis of cancer has been detected in their body, the other spouse, in some cases, will now file a divorce. That's not love. That is lust. And I can get into God is love, and I may do, the, uh, pray for me if you hear, I may do, I have to maybe do a study on love in the Bible. But if we go into that, we won't get into all that I want to get to in the husband. But what is the love of the husband? If you know God is your Savior, and God is your Father, and God, you are a child of God, then you know what love is, for God is love. Now, do you love that woman that you said I do to? Husbands, love your wife. Oh, yeah. Even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. That's charity. Gave himself. That's the charity. Are you willing to lay your life down for your wife? If it ever came to a situation to be it's your wife's life or your life, Who would survive? According to the scripture, the Bible says, if you love your wife, your wife would survive. That's scripture. If Adam died, if Adam died for his bride, Eve. But we do know, according to verse 25, that Christ did die for his bride. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church. Even, that means like to. As. What Jesus Christ done for his bride, are you willing to do for your bride? And gave himself for it. Ephesians 5.33 Nevertheless, let every one of you, speaking to Christians, in particular, so love his wife. Oh, there it is again. Do you love your wife? Bible commands it. Oh, you know, she's changed and we fell out of love and, you know, right? Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so loves his wife. And not only that, even as himself. You're not to love yourself more than you love your wife. You're to love your wife as you love yourself. You take care of yourself. You buy things for yourself to, to, to make yourself better and improved and respectable. So does your wife. I've got to buy those things for my wife. you got to buy things for your wife. I mean, for yourself. Oh, I've got to compliment my wife. Don't you love compliments? My wife wants to go places. Don't you want to go places? And the Okay, we're not going to get into the wife maybe we'll do a wife one later but nevertheless let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself there's an equal love what you want you get her what you desire you desire to, for her listen marriage is not just about the man here not the big king the ruler of the house you also got a partner a help me according to Genesis chapter 2. And that help me is the wife. Are you willing to give your life for her? Are you willing to make what you want for yourself, you will give for her? And I'm talking to you if you're not married and you want to get married and you don't have this relationship with that person you are dating, that woman, don't marry her. 
And if you are married and you are in a marriage, you need to get things right with God. You need to repent and get right with God. Colossians 3.19. Colossians 3.19. Husbands, love your wives. Oh, this is to Paul to another church, to the Colossians, to men in the church. He says to those men, you got a wife? You got a wife? What's he say? What's he say? Husbands, love your wives. And be not bitter against them. So every time we see a husband love your wife, we see another characteristic attached to that verse. To conclude that verse. Love your wives as yourselves. Love your wives that you will give yourself. Love your wives and be not bitter against them. And women can be a creature that Peter says they're the weaker vessel. My wife cries all the time. My wife, my wife. Do you love her? Stop being bitter against her. Stop talking against her. Stop. Help her. Help her. One of the curses of, of Genesis chapter 3 to Eve to women is, is sorrow, tears, pain. Listen, she's got to put up with you. You're not no easy camper to live with, my friend. And probably women, wives, suffer more than the husbands suffer with the wives. And yet the Bible tells us men, don't be bitter. She's going to anger you. And you're definitely going to anger her. Uh, go to another verse here, 1 Corinthians 7. Paul warns us about marriage. First uh, Corinthians seven. This is the marriage in general. First uh, seven. Let me find it here. First, uh, first Corinthians seven, twenty-eight. But, and if thou marry, thou hast not sinned. And if a virgin marry, she has not sinned. Nevertheless, such shall have trouble in the flesh i spare but i spare you paul's warning those who are going to get married if you're going to get married there's no sin but there's going to be troubles there's going to be fights there's going to be arguments there's going to be strife. don't be bitter against the wife husband there's going to be arguments there's going to be misunderstandings there's going to be troubles husbands love your wife She's going to be an irritant. You're going to be an irritant. Husbands, love your wives. You can't escape it. 1 Corinthians 14.35 1 Corinthians 14.35 Listen, husband. 1 Corinthians 14.35 You're going to be held account for your wife. And we'll look at more. Once you say, I do... And you take that woman under your hand and under your heart to be your spouse. You are now obligated by God. And you will give an account for that woman under your control, under your house, your help me. When the Bible says, love your wives three times. And if you don't love your wives, according to the Bible, Christian, you're going to find wood, hay, or stubble. And that ought not to be so. I'm the man, I'm the husband. Okay, really? 1 Corinthians 14, 35. And if they will learn anything, who? Verse 34. Let the women keep silent in the churches. It is not permitted unto them to speak. But they are commanded to be under obedience as also such the law. And they will learn the women. If they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home. 
All right. Husband. I'm the husband. According to that scripture there, when your wife has any biblical answer, she's not to ask the pastor. She's not to go to anybody but you, husband. Husband, you are now the spiritual leader in your house. You are the pastor of that house. I belong to a church. You are the prayer warrior in that church. You are the Bible teacher in that house. You are to know the Bible. And if she has a question and you don't have the answer, it is your responsibility. If the answer is, I don't know, it is your responsibility for an answer that can be sought for you to get it. Not her to go to another man. You are in charge of that house of the Bible of prayer and living like Christ. How's that? You are to teach your the Bible to your wife. She's to learn of the ways of Christianity through her husband. How are you doing? How are you doing? Genesis 18, 19. With this verse we just read, Genesis 18, 19. Genesis 18, 19. Are you ready? This is God speaking. God speaking. God Almighty. God Almighty speaking about Abraham. Genesis. What did I say? Genesis 18, 19. But we'll start in verse 18. Seeing that Abraham shall surely become great and mighty nation. And all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I know him. God knows Abraham. Here we go. That he will command his children. That's the father. And his household. There's the husband. After him. He shall keep the way of the Lord. That's Jehovah. To do justice. And judgment. That the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him husband dear yes that blouse is too revealing you need to take it off and put something else on honey yes you need to read your bible a little more i'll tell you what say you read your bible a little more let's pick out a day I mean, let's pick out a time during the day that we can be together and let's nothing but sit down together read three chapters of the Bible as husband and wife. And listen, you don't have to read it. You can go online and get MP3 or have it read to you. Listen, you can open up a laptop computer or your computer or you can get a CD and you can have the King James Bible read to you. Say, okay, honey, we left off in Genesis 18 last night. Okay, Genesis 19. And you, husband, can guide and lead your family into understanding and reading and justice and judgment. You, can, you must tell that woman that if that book is not Christian, it needs to go. You need to stop reading that. She needs to come to you and say, well, honey, this right here, is it right for me to do or is it wrong for me to do? And you've got to put judgment and justice with what we read in 1 Corinthians. Now, your wife may not listen to you all the time. Your wife may not like what you have to say. But husband, that is your duty. And we will probably maybe get into wives later. You, husband, are the one in your house. That is wrong. We're not going to do it. That is right. We're going to do it. It was the husband. It was the man that said, as for me in my house, we will serve the Lord. He didn't ask his wife anything. You got to take that stand. And it may not be a happy, wonderful marriage stand. Hopefully it will be. But you got a 50-50 chance of being healthy and right in the Lord. Or well, you got to be careful who you marry. 
Second Samuel eleven. Second Samuel eleven. Husbands, we're not talking about the wife. We're talking about you. Well, my wife may fight against me. They fought against Jesus. Paul wrote to one church, Have I become your enemy because I told you the truth? All they that live God in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. And it may be your marriage. You as a husband may take a stand for the Bible and God and maybe your wife won't. Prayerfully, hopefully she will. So 2 Samuel 11, 2. And it came to pass at even time that David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house, and from the roof he saw a woman washing herself. And the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And we know that comes to the, the famous story of David's great sin, adultery with Bathsheba. You say, well, what are you going to talk about with husbands like that? Husbands, keep your eyes off other women. Proverbs says, as far as your wife, let her breasts satisfy thee at all times. You know, if you're not going to be satisfied with her looks, then don't marry her if you're going to go looking at others. And realize that young age, when you marry that bride, she's going to get old and wrinkled. You still got to love the wrinkles. You still got to love the bags and the eyes and the sagging. You got to love that woman for who she is, when she is, and what age she is. My wife is not beautiful right now, laying in the hospital bed with all those tubes. But oh, she's too beautiful and sexy to me. How's that? And look at what Jesus said, Matthew 5. Matthew 5. Matthew chapter 5. 25, 25, 28, 25, 28, all good, Matthew 5, 28, it's the same aspect, but I say unto you, whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her has committed adultery with her already in his heart, are you married, did you see that woman in the bikini? You didn't sleep with her, but if you desired her, Jesus said, you've already committed adultery against your wife. That pictures on the internet, were they good looking? Did they really tame your heart? You committed adultery. That magazine, that book, whatever it was that, that excited you, your secretary, the other woman at, at the job, if they floated your boat and got your fantasies going, you committed adultery. You committed spiritual adultery. You didn't have to do physical adultery. You may have been unfaithful to your wife, husband, by looking. You don't have to get in the bed. You didn't have to get undressed. How you doing? You ready to confess your sins as a husband? Bible says, remember, remember what it says? Love your wives. You're not loving your wife when you look somewhere else. David had wives and ruined his family because of the sin. Gratification of the heart of the flesh, that part of love of marriage is to be your wife and no other. Look at Hebrews. Hebrews, that's 12 or 13. 12 or 13. 13. 4. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. The marriage bed is undefiled. Between a husband and a wife. Ill, he wants me to do that. That's undefiled. That's the marriage. The husband has lust. The husband has those fantasies. We're not talking about the wives, but the marriage bed's undefiled. We're talking about a man that looks another woman to lust after her. For whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. 
Remember you were to be the judge like Abraham? And David looked at that woman, and if you look at that woman and commit adultery, adulterous God will judge. You have turned the judgment of your husbandhood in that family to God because you've been unfaithful to your wife. And you've not stepped into another bed, another bedroom or hotel room. You just stepped with your eyes and your heart. And you've been unfaithful to your wife. God says, I'll judge that. You got those desires, you got those fantasies, take your wife into the bedroom, close that door. That's the one. Remember I said, Proverbs said, as far as your wife, let her breast satisfy thee at all times. Uh, I'm not talking about being perverse, and I'm not talking about, you know, hurting or injuring kind of thing. I mean, there's a point to abuse. I'm not saying abuse. You don't abuse your wife. Don't you abuse it. 1 Corinthians 7 3. 1 Corinthians 7 3. See, when you got married, you wanted someone to take care of you. You want a married mother. That's what you wanted. You wanted a married mother, 1 Corinthians 7 3. You wanted a married mother that you could have sex with. That's what you wanted. You came to adolescence, your body just blew up with fireworks, and I got something, a desire in me that a female can do. And I'm a Christian, and I'm not supposed to do fornication, I'm not supposed to do adultery, so I will find a woman and marry her just so. Yeah. But you're supposed to love her according to the Bible. You're supposed to be the head according to the Bible. We'll look at that in a moment. But I mean the head is, you're the pastor, you're the, the spiritual leader in your house. You know why a lot of families in the churches are dying today? Because the man, the husband of the house doesn't take any spiritual authority. He leaves it for the woman and his children in the church that can only get his family at least no more than four hours a week in your typical average church. I'm going to let my Sunday school teacher Take care of my children for 45 minutes. I'm going to let the pastor take care of my wife. Let's see, 45 minutes Sunday school, a 45 minutes Sunday morning. Lord forbid if you go back Sunday night, 45 minutes. And then if you go to a midweek service, 45 minutes. 45 minutes of 24 hours of a day. You have turned your wife over to the world and you expect your church your pastor to take care of your wife and the bible says absolutely not you're to take care of your wife first corinthians 7 3 let the husbands render unto the wife due benevolence that means goodwill likewise also the wife unto her husband all right so goodwill you are to do goodwill to your wife when you talk bad about her, you disgrace her before other people. And I've heard those talk, oh, my wife, oh, my wife did, oh, my. That's not goodwill. When you badmouth your wife, it's a sin. And you need to repent of it. Now, I've been married twice. My first wife died, my, my wife now. I have never, ever told anybody anything negative about my wife none of their business I've taken it to the Lord I speak well of my wife I speak the greatness of my wife I uplift my wife I don't bring her down it's not a public thing because I guarantee if she were to go to your same friend and start talking about how bad you are honestly probably put you to shame what you talk about her what if your wife had the same amount of time that you had bad mouth on her and honestly bad mouth you? Why don't men ever talk bad mouth about their wives with their wife present? The wife, verse 4, has not power over her own body. All right. 
There are things I want my wife, I don't want her to do, and I don't want her to wear, and I don't want her to have. My wife is, you know, equally adjusted on that. My wife does not wear perfume, does not wear cosmetic. We're both agreed on that. I don't want her to do that. Okay? Certain outfits, we're both agreed. Wife, the wife has not power over her own body, but the husband. And likewise, the husband has not power over his own body, but the wife. See my beard? My wife wants my beard. She likes my beard. She likes, likes my beard trim. I wanted one time, I wanted, you know, the, um, I was those people in Pennsylvania. Oh, Damage. I want to see, you know, they don't have the mustache. And I said, hey, I want to have my beard look without the mustache. She said, absolutely not. You know what I said? Okay. Well, no, it's what I like of her body and she don't do or do what I do, what she likes or does not like of my body. Remember, you don't love your wives as you love yourself. I mean, if you want your wife to have deodorant, then she wants you to have deodorant. Okay? You as a man, you need things. She as a woman, she needs her things. Okay? You can't always watch the movies you want to watch. You got it. I say, hey, honey, what movie do you want? Oh. You know, she probably says the same thing about the movies you choose. Oh, well, she we watch movies. Oh, come on. My wife and I have a movie night. You know, kids going off the bed. We're just here before our bedtime. We'll put in a movie or, you know, we watch, you know, the Bob Ross videos and stuff like that. I mean, we'll watch it together. Things we like. I guarantee she's watched some movies I did not like. I guarantee she's watched movies that she rather not like. She didn't say turn it off and I didn't tell her to turn it off. I'll tell her to say pick a movie. And she'll tell me, pick a movie. She won't give me food that I don't like, and I don't give her food she don't like. You know, you can't have your house filled with the manly things and not have the womanly things. You can't tell your wife in, in her house what color curtains. Unless she wants your opinion too. Okay? Okay. She wants the bed made, you let her make the bed. Plain and simple. All right, that's that. First Corinthians. Ephesians 5.23. Ephesians 5.23. It's not all about you. It's not all about God. What do you mean? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God could just sat in heaven, just thought about himself and let all mankind go to hell. But he thought about us. Problem is, I'm going to say this tongue in cheek, but a lot of husbands let their wives go to hell. And I'm not talking about the physical place. I'm just let them just go to ruin, let them go to destruction. That's what I mean by hell. They don't care. Ephesians 5.23 for the husband is the head of the wife. Uh-oh. Slave's going good there. Even as Christ is the head of the church. And he is the savior of the body. Now match that with verse 25. Husbands, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. You know what the marriage is pictured, supposed to picture? It's supposed to picture the bride of Jesus Christ. Husband, you are in charge of that house. And if you're not, You've defiled the word of God. You have allowed your wife to defile. An animal that is, and it happens, an animal or a person is born with two heads will die. A household that has two heads is anti-scripture and is going to die. The saying is the man, and if you don't like it, that's tough. What the Bible says, the man is the head of the house. He is to wear the pants. He is in charge. 
He is to have the final say, not without the wife. Remember, you're not of, of yourself, it's of the wife. And the wife is also of you. It's not all about you. It's also about the wife. We'll see that. But the standard of the family of God is as the standard of the church is the man is the head. You know why churches are failing? They're not letting Jesus Christ be the head. They're letting the world be the head. They're letting the world dictate to what they want. So men are to be the head. Genesis 3, 1. Genesis 3, 1. All right, as the head. Genesis 3, 1. Now the serpent was more still than any of the beasts of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, has God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman, the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden. But of the tree, of the fruit of the tree, which is the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. That's not what God said. And the, and the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God does know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to her eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise. She took the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her. Adam's there. Adam let all the talking be done by his wife. Adam did not step in as, as he should have in that family. It was God in chapter 2 we read that God commanded Adam to not eat that fruit. Adam did not do as the husband should have done as we read in chapter 2. And look at the fall. Look at the consequences. Hospitals, police stations, prisons, death, cemeteries. It's because Adam did not stand up and be the husband and said, Eve, step aside, let me deal with this serpent. And he should have called on God. But the woman corrected the Bible. The woman changed the Bible. The woman added to the Bible. The woman subtracted from the, from the voice of God. And she didn't even hear. God told Adam. Adam told her something. She had some idea. The breakdown of Genesis 3 and the wages of sin is death because Adam did not step up and do what he was supposed to do. That's why churches are dying. That's why families are dying today because of that. 1 Kings 21. 1 Kings 21. Destroy your family. And let me tell you, if, if women, if you're, if you're listening to this, about you want to know about your husband. If you don't give in to your husband, and you don't listen to your husband. You're giving in and you're allowing Satan to work in your family, Genesis chapter 3. And you're doing more harm and you are sinning against your husband. And you will give an account and you will have your husband give an account for your rebellion. Look at 1 Kings 21, verse 7. And Jezebel, his wife, said unto him, Dost thou now govern the kingdom of Israel? Arise and eat bread and let thy heart be merry. I will give thee the vineyard and name of the Jezreel. So she wrote letters in Ahab's name and sealed them with his seat. seal. Naboth is killed by the words of Jezebel, by the authority of her husband. Look at verse 19. Verse 18. Arise and go meet Ahab. That's Jezebel's husband. Verse 19. And thou shalt speak unto him, Ahab. Thus, thus saith the Lord, hast thou killed? No, he didn't. His wife did. And under the authority of the husband of that wife, his wife did the deeds, but God held Ahab to the consequences of his wife. Husband, Christian husband, you're going to be charged before God for things that your wife has done that she's not done standing at the judgment seat of Christ. If you're lost at the great white throne judgment. As Ahab had to answer to the rebellion of Jezebel, you will have to answer to the rebellion of your wife. 
That's why God said, if she's got a question, she comes to you. That's why God said, you're to love your wife. You're to guide your house. You are the head of the house, not the wife. Adam's consequences of not speaking up and being a husband to Eve that he should have been. Look at the desire. Look at the, 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 the events. Look at the tragedy that Genesis 3, Genesis 3 has brought forth. And God sends a prophet up to Ahab says, Thou killed that man. It was his wife. It was his wife. Because he didn't step up to the plate. He should have said, Hey, he didn't even know what his wife was doing. He's still charged. Matthew 27, 19. Husbands, you're going to give an account for what's more what the churches preach about the accountability of a husband. And we're not even talking about the fathers. We're talking about husbands. Look at Matthew 27, 19. And I know, I know your wife may not help you. What's the Bible say? Love your wives. Be not bitter against them. You're to love them to death. You're to love them as your own self. What do you do? You got prayer. Matthew 27, 19. And when he, Pilate, sat down in the judgment seat, his wife, Pilate's wife, sent unto him, saying, Have nothing to do with this just man, Jesus. For I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. You know what Pilate's wife told him? That man, Jesus, you're going to deal with today, hon? When you go to work today, you're going to have Jesus stand before you? Yes, dear. Don't do anything. Just Now, Pilate was an unwise man. He did not listen to his wife. And as a husband, sometimes you got to listen to your wife. You can't say, I'm the king of this castle. You have no rule. Absolutely not. Imagine what history would have been for Pilate if he had listened to his wife that afternoon or morning. His wife was 100% right. Turn, it over, turn Jesus over to Herod. Let him handle it. Evidently, God was trying to protect Pilate through his wife. And Pilate didn't listen. There may be times that God will speak to you, husband, through that little, little you know, being of their house called your wife. God may just use her. Possible. And like Sarah, she could be wrong. Here, take my handmaid. Not everybody's right. Not everybody's wrong. But don't think just because you're the man, you can't listen to the woman. No, absolutely wrong. You're a fool. You're a fool. Number 30, verse 6. Number 30, verse 6. You have authority in your house. But you also have a help me. They say she, Eve was taken from the rib, from the side. She wasn't taken from the foot to step on. It's not biblical, but it's, it's biblical. Numbers 30, verse 6. And if she, a girl, woman, had at all an husband, when she bowed or uttered out of her lips, wherein she bound her soul, she makes an oath. Her husband heard and held his peace at her in the day that he heard it. Then her vows shall stand, and her vows wherein she bound her soul shall stand. But if her husband disallowed her on the day that he heard it, then he shall make her vow which he vowed, and that which she uttered with her lips, wherein she bound her soul of none effect, and the Lord shall forgive her. What's that one? If your wife is going to say or do something, of a vow you as your as her husband has the right to say no lord god forgive her for that and god says okay forgive him well if your wife is going to make a vow or oath or say something to do something that will harm will hurt or not even harm or her whatever the consequences if you hear it and you do not react to it yay or nay god says okay she's abiding So that woman goes to sign a contract for something, and you say, no, don't sign that contract. You're not obligated. As Jezebel signed her husband's name to the death warrant of Naboth. 
Ahab should have said no. Or if your wife goes and signs that contract and you know she signed that contract, you are liable as her husband to fulfill that contract. It's that simple. As a husband, you have that power and authority. First Kings 11, I believe that is. My hand my is terrible. First Kings 11. First Kings 11. You got the authority, but you, you're not the overlord. You're the husband. You are in charge, but you're not the dictator. Leave dictators to South American countries. Bring your wife in the realm of the church. But God had it to be. 1 Kings 11, 1. But King Tom loved many strange women. Together with the daughters of Pharaoh, and you go on, verse 4. And it came to pass when Solomon was old, that his wives turned away his heart from other God, after other gods. Two more statements. While we make a statement here, go to Proverbs 31. I'll make a statement here, what we just read now. Be careful who you marry. Do not, absolutely not, 1 Corinthians 7, marry a woman that's not saved. Do not marry any person of the opposite sex that's not saved. And if they're saved, make sure they're doing what the Bible tells them to do. Solomon married women that were not of Israel. Solomon married women of other gods, and he turned his heart to other gods. He didn't correct his wives. His wives uncorrected him. Proverbs 31. Verse number 28. Her children rise up. This is a wife. And call her blessed. Her husband also. And he praises her. All right. The big rule of husband. Big rule of man. We're going to close on Proverbs 31. Do you praise your wife? Do you love your wife? Do you love your wife as your own self? Do you love your wife and you're willing to give your life for her? Are you willing to be Christ in her life, to be an example of Christ? Christ is willing and wanting to give and to answer her prayers. Are you the spiritual instructor of your wife? Are you the one that sets forth the standards and the judgments in your house? Are you willing to listen to your wife because she may have something good to say? Are you an embarrassment? Are you a failure? Are you going to get wood, hay, or stubble? They say diamonds are a woman's best friend. But as far as accountability of Christ, as far as the husband, are you gold, silver, or precious stone? Are you wood, hay, and stubble? All the problems of your wife may be because of you, man. <laughs> 